last time out with Grimsby. Pretty well. Flying up the league, scoring goals for fun, until Bournemouth came around and turned us to garbage, with the big money signings putting us to the sword. But not all is bad though, as we do sit third, just outside of Watford in second. As speaking of Watford, remember Troy Deeney, the manager who had a bad spell here. He's in charge of Plymouth Argyle now, who we play first in today's episode. As yes, this is going to be very tight for Lalana. Not only is it awkward facing who you've replaced, but he's a player that played under Troy Deeney when he was actually coaching us at the start of the championship. But now, of course, we're into our second season at this level, and after fighting relegation, just surviving. We are flourishing near the top, but we cannot have it stop here as we are in third. And Plymouth, they're down in 20th. So you can kind of understand why Troy Deeney has got the job. He didn't get relegated with us, but almost did. Going close as their first away. That is a long travel as today. I would like to make it to the next window. So we've got to get cooking as for the next game. Well, we do have Savage on international duty. And the best player to replace him is Casado, who is a wonder kid we signed when he was released from Barcelona. And I quite frankly can't believe he hasn't come good yet. He has not took his opportunities. And that's slightly worrying. As let's hope he just steps it up. I'm not going to speak to the player. Jinx anything at all. I'm just going to trust him. So here we go. Plymouth Argyle against ex-manager Troy Deeney. I am desperate to beat him. And I'd love if Adam Lallana just gave him it a little bit. Because he did fall out with a lot of players. And cause a nuisance. Which wasn't very good for the club. As we've got a throw in straight out to Marriott. Into Casado. Come on. That's nice little skill from the Spaniard, who's yet to, of course, touch down in Cleethorpes here on the coast, as that's a good ball into Schmidt. Hits it at the defender, as he's been brilliant, Schmidt. He has really been a good player. And look at Casado with a turn into Matty Wolf, who is at his distance, and it's a brilliant save. Not long now until he scores one of his worldies, which we need to get him back to. But Plymouth with a chance, and it is just wide from Izaka. We need to be careful, as their strikers might be decent. They are coached by a former striker and Wilson coming into the midfield. He's going inverted, which is funny because that's the tactic our first manager wanted to play. David Artel as Casado moves inside. It's Casado, number 33, our Spanish midfielder. Not doing too bad, but still we didn't get past our man as Wolf. Gets the header down. Matty Wolf to keep on running. He's going to look for his teammate. His passing is all over the place. Especially this season. And his passing could have resulted in a goal for Plymouth. But Isaac has hit the crossbar. Letting us survive once more. And come on, we've not woken up. This is probably Milovanovic's first touch. And same can be said for McAtee. But he does have a run on here. John McAtee gets it in the middle. And I can't lie, that first first half little bit let down boys we need to be a bit more attacking Denis Undav is on our bench queuing the substitution it's not been Milovanovic's game right here as a run from Nathan Marriott he's dropped into the midfield and number nine on the wing and he's got a ball into Milovanovic looking for the one two using Schmidt now who has always beaten defenders and he's put it out for a goal kick very dodgy from him. I expect a lot better, mate. Come on. You're doing yourself an injustice right there as Casado somehow keeps it. He's had a very decent game covering for, of course, Charlie Savage, who is at Wales. But then again, we've lost the ball elsewhere. And Summers, it's fallen to him. Undav making a move. Dennis Undav past the defender and shooting into the bottom corner. That is what you call an impact from the bench. Seriously, on the left foot, a Assisted by you and Summers on the chest. Left foot bounces it into the side netting. The man is unreal and nobody can stop him as Whitaker 
We need to stop him. Doug Tharm, come on. You've been easily rounded. Don't let them back in the game, Matty Wolf. He's better defending than he is attacking, which is rather unusual as don't let them get forward right here. Come on, only 1-0. Not a good scoreline. But at the end, it is really only the points that do matter as McAtee. He needs to probably get amongst the goals soon as Wilson on the run. He's been amongst the goals and Ewan Summers almost joins in the fun. Very, very close as we need to win that header. And Matty Wolf dominant in the air as Marriott. He's going to keep the ball here. Can we look for another one late on? I've put Liam Thompson on. And he just hits it at the defender. And oh, wow. Okay, that was the end of the game. So we're straight into the presser. And I guess we beat Troy Deeney. So, Adam, you've got one up against the last manager to coach you. How does that feel coming from a manager's perspective? It's quite nice, I can't lie, especially after hearing the words of Troy Deeney when he was manager, saying, I was too old to do good. Well, I don't mind Lalana biting back. I think Troy deserves it as we are up to third, or should I say staying at third. As the only two teams above us in the league at the moment are the teams to beat us. As something I'm thinking here. Not that our defence has done bad, but a player that's done better defending-wise than actually attacking is the man Adam Lallana is bringing into the office right here. It's a club legend at the moment, Matty Wolf. Matty, I've spoke to a lot of players over the recent weeks, and I'd like to speak to you about your positioning on the field. I'm an ex-midfielder, and I did like going box to box, but when I look at you, I just don't see you as an attacker. So here's what I'm going to offer you, and listen up because it's simple. I'm willing to upgrade your contract and extend your stay at Grimsby if you could train as a centre-back in this team. Which Matty says, yeah, sure, I'll give it a go, boss. I do like getting stuck in, and I know we've got a lot of other midfielders. So it looks like the deal is done. Adam Lallana is going to be training Matty Wolf as a centre-back instead of playing him in the midfield. Plus, he's got a new deal, and there we go. It takes two weeks. He's not got much pace, but he's a very physical player. And yes, it is bad for McGuinness and definitely bad for Cairns, who probably needs a loan deal now. But it's definitely good for Casado, who gets to, of course, step in to the midfield role right now. And another player stepping in for West Brom is Undav. A brilliant player. And we are at home for this next game, Blundell Park. And West Brom are just below us. So I couldn't really risk, you know, simming over this game. It is only a highlight package, though. And Savage back from international duty into Tharm and Wolf. He should be up the field a little bit, but he's not right here. It's Marriott who puts a ball into the middle. And that was actually Matty who was diving at the ball as in the top corner. Red card, but on the field, a highlight. It's Marriott running through. Nathan Marriott's overtouched it. A big chance for us, as I'm guessing they'll get highlights from now on. I don't know who has got sent off, but they're trying to get round the defense. It's Thomas Asante. Good save. And Wilson has to clear it. Close for the baggies as we've got a free kick right here. And I'm going to try and cross it edge of the box. And that is actually dreadful. Marriott, what are you doing? As now Swift to try and put a ball swiftly into our box. Headed away. And the highlight finishes. Will the game finish? Yes, I knew it. When you get a highlight in the 74th minute, it always roughly ends afterwards. And a nil-nil draw. It happens a lot in sim games. But with 10 men... Probably the best thing to happen this time. And this is rather unusual. You can see no one suspended. The red card we got in the last game doesn't seem to carry over. But we are going to be simulating Middlesbrough the next game. And Undav didn't start, but Savage gets us three points. Lovely stuff, as after two games, we are second. Watford have dropped points. And we're sneaking up on Bournemouth, but still very far away as we do have a position change. It's not going to be, of course, Matty Wolf this time, but the man stepping into midfield to replace him, Casado. Stepping into legendary boots in the midfield of Grimsby, and I really wanted to use this guy, so I'm glad he's playing well. Our weakest two in the team now, you might just see right there, are our youth players, but I'm not taking them out as we suffer defeat. Beat. Stoke beat us as, I can't lie, a shock to the system, but Matty has trained to be a centre-back. 79 rated, are you absolutely kidding me? Now this man looks like he is 
Well, he's definitely the best player in the team. Coming all the way through with us, up all the divisions, and he's plus five overall, only at 26. Brilliant from Matty. I cannot believe how we've changed the team. We are looking very good now. And we're heading into the derby. Hull City, and as you can see, 22 points. Whereas we have 29 and want to get back to second. So Tharm and Wolf, two season one lads, are partnering in the defense against Hull City in a derby. Not what I expected to say, but one thing I expected to say, because I'm saying it too often right now, Charlie Savage is playing for Wales. So Thompson is back in. He cost us a million pound, did Thompson? And I'm yet to see anything from that. Casado was a free and he's better. So yeah, he needs to learn from him as Casado straight away on the ball. A killer pass into Wilson and gets the ball back into McAtee. We were hammered by Hull City last season. In, of course, the Derby as that's a brilliant shot to start off with. Marko Milovanovic, who still is starting games, despite not scoring as many as Undav, because I do trust him in this team, and I do want to get the best out of his potential. But at the moment, I can't lie, I'm not seeing it. He's not as good as, of course, David Washington, who went by, but still I'm keeping faith as Kane Wilson. Can he hit a man in the middle from his decent crosses, which he's always put into the box and been very decent with? Javier Simmons. Though, they're trying to come at us. And Kane Wilson, he's been brilliant apart from that pass. As it's a good shot from there, man. Andy Lonergan rattling the crossbar of our goalkeeper's net, who's been decent. Definitely a foul on our man. Catching the ankles of the man in our midfield as Thompson kicked the ball. You're not playing well, my friend. If you want to take Savage's place, you've got a lot of work to do, as this is a good run from Nathan Marriott into Casado around his man, and Milovanovic. It's a little bit of a skew if pass from Casado, which has to be a lot better, but we did steal the ball back anyway, and Thompson, oh my days, how's the ref not give that as a foul? Because we definitely have a chance. Nathan Marriott running down the right-hand side. He's got a defender to beat. If he can beat him with a ball across the box, it's all over the place for Hull, but they survive our attack somehow. And I guess with the new defense, Matty Wolf has been solid. It's the attack that needs to wake up now. And that is why on Derby Day, I am going to make a big change. Dennis Undav coming on as Milovanovic needs to improve. He's just got the experience. Definitely not the potential, Dennis, but I just think you need that especially on Derby Day. As McAtee waking up, because he desperately needs to wake up as well with an overlap from Kane Wilson. And Casado is through. He has got to score against Panda. And another wasted chance as we need to work on one-on-ones. Matty Wolf misplacing a pass, hence why he's in the defense. But Thompson steals it back. And Summers, looking for Undav maybe, is going to go McAtee instead, who's got another overlap from Kane Wilson. Brilliant player Kane, as he's going to step inside himself, out wide, into Summers. You and Summers on the angle. But no one attacking it. We do lack this goal threat. We need a bit more from Dennis Undav, as that's a good ball over the top. Bad header. Straight to Brandon Fleming, who's going to head it back into the box, and a bit of a mix-up right there. That chance is better than any of ours, but still, we'll try and attack as if Undaf is onside, which is not. That was a chance. That was a big chance for Grimsby. But we fail to take it as Thompson, come on, liven up in the last 10 minutes right here. John McAtee needs to improve, and he could improve right here if he scores on Derby Day. John McAtee, man, you're supposed to be a striker. Hitting the keeper, and no. The ball over the top for Hull City to try and do what we did. Game opening up in the latter stages of the derby as Undaf with the header away. And Marriott broke. Ref, you can't end the game there. It is a derby day again, though, where we draw nil-nil. And we've just got to win at their place. I think I would love it more if we, of course, did that away from home. As you can see, Ipswich jump above us. And we still have 30 points. Which isn't bad for us, of course. It's above our expectations as we've got some difficult games. Two in a week. Plus the next month, we have Bristol, who are just above us in the league. We have Luton twice. And Barnsley, another derby. That one on Boxing Day as Derby County beat us 2-1. And they're low down in the league. Thompson with a goal against his former club as they are rock bottom of the table. 
Of course we go and lose to them. Really bad result that calls for a comeback, but we've lost two games in a row. Blackburn now beating us. Drops us to ninth outside of the playoffs even. We've gone from competing for second, which is Bristol on 34 points. So now being down here with 30, I mean, it is only four points, but teams have got games in hand like Stoke. And now... We've got to try and beat the Robins. But before we go into it, Doug Tharn brought into the office as Alana loves to talk to his hierarchy players. Doug, I don't forget the promise I made you at the start of the season. I'd like to offer you a contract. You and Matty will make a good partnership and increase your wage. But do us another favor. Make sure we don't lose to Bristol in the next game. As momentum's a big thing, and if we let it slide too much, we could be looking at surviving relegation again. Then again, I don't know why I've said that, because we definitely need to be more positive, but Bristol City, starting with an attack, they do have Noah Leyburn up top, who's a very decent striker, as Kane Wilson, against his former club, has to just watch his man, Max Bird, Knight, ex-Derby men, who got stopped by our defence, but, oh my days, penalty kick for Bristol as Knight. Where is he going to go? We need to save the spot kick right this could be really bad if we don't come back as we are falling down big time it's the christmas time slump as casado though runs inside needs a few runners off him we finally get a highlight and we must make the most of it but still charlie savage losing the ball as this looks like a decent switch and put it across the box Nathan Marriott, what are you doing? What the hell are we doing as don't let them score again? Max Bird, Riley, Riley goes and scores. So it's 2-0 to Bristol now in the highlight package where you only get like one highlight a game. And we've got actually two for once. And great, we were offside leading to their next highlight, which is them kind of through. Doug Tharm, it's a lost ball. We don't even get the highlight, but we do get a counter-attack, which we don't make the most out of. And yes, a 2-0 defeat. That was at home, as one thing that I've noticed, when this man doesn't play or doesn't play well, we are kind of screwed. As you can see, five games less than Marko Milovanovic, who's got five out of 90, not good, as his rating isn't budging, and he is quite unhappy, so I'm gonna go ahead and start him against Millwall, which we win, Undav with a goal, and actually Undav with both of them, trying to prove a point that he has to be the starting striker, as I mean he does have the experience, as the next game, Luton, always a tough fixture, and Undav scores again, despite still being unhappy as we approach Barnsley, right, a derby day, all oh my days. I mean, McAtee against his former club. It's a point on the road as we still fail to win derbies, as you can see, just outside the playoffs by four points, which is a little bit of a slip. So I'm going to speak to Lalana, see if he knows the reason why. As Adam, we are outside of the playoffs, which we look so comfortable in. Like I ask you after most games, do you have a reason why the team should stop performing a little bit at the moment? As Adam kind of looks outraged saying, why do you keep questioning me on this? I am a good manager and I'll get the best out of this group. And sorry to sound too angry, I am going to calm down a little bit but do you know what would really help me out making a new signing 